Hello fellow Dundine of Middle Earth and welcome to the very first faction guide on this channel. Today I will cover uh, the Kingdom of Gondor uh, because it's my favorite faction so I thought why not start with Gondor. And we are going to go through a lot today. Uh, first I'm going to go through the early game, the mid game and the end game and take a look at how your economy and your military looks during those phases. And we're going to take a look at their enemies. And lastly, we're going to take a look at uh, all your units and what kind of units, what they offer in terms of armor piercing and other other stuff. Uh, and we're definitely going to take a look at what kind of enemy units you want to face with different units and such. So I'm just in general going to try to cover as much as I can of this faction. So let's just start at it. We're going to start off by portraying the early game for Gondor. So let's take a look at the economy and the military in the early game. First and foremost, you want to gain some more income. 2,500 per turn with this faction is just very poor to be honest. You can make around 8,000 uh, around turn 3 if you utilize your buildings to their full potential and how to do this is just build meeting halls in most places where it's possible because then you can station a lot more troops here and gain free upkeep and getting free upkeep is one of the best ways to get uh, money in this game to be honest it can challenge the mines so especially on the front here it's very important because you'll be able to store more troops here which will make it easier to defend against Mordor. But you also want to get it around Pelargir and the coastal regions, because in around turn 25, Umbar will send out um, Corsair raids, which you want to make sure you are prepared for. So another building which is very good is the 550 coin mines. You'll find this in Kalenhad, uh, and this mine is very, it brings in a lot of money. But I still suggest to bring to build the meeting halls first, because just getting these meeting halls up is just going to... If you just build this in two places, you're going to gain probably like 400 coins more just per turn. And just imagine you're doing it over the whole realm. I am doing this in my Gondorian campaign in 2.2 and it, it's just working really well. I believe somewhere around here, yeah, Ethering as well have this very wealthy mine. So you might want to build this and uh, build the Kalnhad and Ethering mines as soon as you have I've done uh, built the meeting halls. Another building which really shines for Gondor is the communal farming. This is a very important building because it will bring a lot of trade between your settlements as well as you can uh, raise your tax uh, without the population becoming mad and it will give you a huge bonus as well in the income. Uh, so all of these three buildings are buildings you want to build early on in the early game as Gondor. And now uh, let's take a look at the enemies in the early game. Especially Mordor is going to attack you. Uh, they will start with some larger stacks like uh, this one and th this one here. And they have very strong units like the Lok Inasrim and Lok Gamprim. And they have a lot of Southron and Eastling units, which is quite good. So, what I usually do to prevent them from just massacring me with these armies is just to defend Kyle Anders and Henethanen. Because if they attack any of these settlements, and you bring another army to attack uh, one of these settlements, you'll be able to play a bridge battle, where you can easily pin them in between on the bridge. So that's a very good way to just get rid of their early overpowered units. And after that they will not get uh, a lot of overpowered units until you take Minas Morgul or Moranon, then they will get a Doomstack army. But that's basically Mordor in the early game. Just try to turtle. That's usually what I do. You can play aggressive as well. I usually let them take Isenoskelet and then take it from them. 
it's going to be much easier than taking Eastern Skelet and then getting attacked by Mordor. So you just want to make them, let them take Eastern Skelet. It's not worth going for it. And the Aradunaim will send Corsair fleets around turn 25. So you want to make sure you are prepared. Just fill up these forts and fill up the garrisons in Lundgal and Anjuland. And also Tarragrondos if you take Tarragrondos. Pelargi is usually a target as well. So you want to make sure you have some units here prepared. Uh, and also a lot of units here. But these guys will actually not be there in time. So you want you want to make sure you have the governor's quarters in here. It's a very important building in Pelargi. Especially it will become more important after a while when you have to start attacking down here as well. Now the Vargs of Count can also be an enemy in the early game. Sometimes they will take Ostithil. And then there will be a hard situation up here where you get attacked from two sides. So a good way to prevent this is just by taking this, like just holding them at this bridge. Or either you can start pushing against them. That's also an alternative. Now the last faction I would say is an early game enemy for Gondor is Enedwife. They can often take Thargondos or Kirithiaur. However, they have some pretty large garrisons, so they might not always attack, but it's a bit RNG. So you want to make sure Anuland and Longan is prepared for this. Uh, meeting halls, just build them here. Get them, get them done. And of course you have these forts, which is very useful as well. But it can be quite efficient to be aggressive against them. Or you can just ally with them. That's also an alternative, of course. Now, I think that's the early game covered pretty much. Yeah, so let's start over with the mid game now. In the mid game, you want to start building the ports. Because they will bring in a lot of income uh, around your coastal regions. And it's just in general going to bring in a lot of trade. And it's quite useful to have ships so that you can be able to start launching naval attacks on Harad and Aradunaim. And, and that's often an important part in the mid game because you start hitting the barracks went. And these factions have taken up a lot more land around this time. So the barracks of Khand. Harad and Aradnaim is usually your new enemy because you have most likely taken out Mordor. And it is important to be able to ship these units. Another building that really shines out in this period is, of course, the barracks because you hit the barracks went. Just getting out those elites is very important. You have a lot of beautiful elites which can be used very efficiently against these factions. So you definitely want to uh, build those buildings as fast as possible. Also getting armor on your units is usually a good idea. Because you will outperform these factions armor wise. At least Harad. Um, Iron Nime can get some nice armor upgrades anyways. But that's never really a problem when you play against them. Uh, it really depends on Enelwife. It really depends on how you have met them. Uh, they can either be have taken some or just hold target on the sun the hour or you can have pushed out quite far it really depends on how you play and it's a bit hard to predict uh, so yeah you you usually want to have at least taken care the hour and occupy this fort and be able to defend against them if you're not going aggressive but going aggressive against Enervath can usually work out pretty well if you are bringing some nice units in your army. You don't really need a lot of units to be able to defend against them properly. Just bring um, Hirlin with his Pinoth Gelling Cavalry. And they're going to do a very nice work against those men. This is, of course, a late game cavalry unit. They're not the best cavalry unit, but at least in the early game they will shine very much. Uh, and you can definitely use them to a nice advantage. Now Isengard might also become an enemy during this period. In my Gondor campaign I believe I am actually like sieging up 
I think got around the 40th turn or something. So in some odd occasions you, you might just meet them uh, in the mid game. But then you have, a, of course, also expand against Ender Wife. And it's it's not that hard to bring down Isengard, you just want to make... You, you bring a large army with elites and just hit Isengard. Uh, because they are occupied with Rohan and you're going to be able to perform pretty well against Isengard because they're so occupied. And that, I think, is the mid game. And then we come to the end game. Economy wise now, you definitely want to get um, some roads built because you'll be able to move your troops a lot faster around and in place like Kand and Enelwife it's going to it's quite large chunks of land and if you have roads that's just going to help your income and your mobility and in general uh, barracks is also important in this phase and that's basically it like in the late game you usually have a quite strong economy it's more like what you prefer what you prefer like you can build trebuchets and what kind of units you want you just you just build the buildings you kind of want in the late game if you have been successful in the early game and mid game the economy is not really a large issue in the end game now military wise you will probably be at the end of fighting the Ardenheim and Harad you have probably defeated by this point. Now Khand is probably still alive but you're, you're pressing into the last settlements and you do have control. Up here you're probably still fighting Enelwyth, perhaps even started to fight Dunham. You probably defeated the Isengard. And the new enemy that you are facing now is probably Rune. You just started attacking them and you're just pushing into their lands. But it's usually not a struggle because you have so many elites and you can just push out whatever units you, you will. You're just pushing out armies of Fountain Gardens, Knights of the Silver Swan and such. And that's usually what I do at this point. In my Gondor Let's Play, I, I just push out nice armies here just having fun and then you have basically and that's basically the enemies you're sitting with sometimes even in the end game though Amroth might backstab you and Rohan might backstab you that happened in my let's play that was a bit frustrating even though we crushed them utterly it's just lore wise it's just it sucks but that's just how it is now I think I'm going to go over to the battle map and we're going to take a look at all the units you got and what units you want to make uh, a look for from the other factions. Because there is some factions that can definitely yield some damage to you. For example, Khan is one of the enemies which is quite hard to play against. But yeah, I will see you on the battle map. And welcome to the battle map. We're now going to take a look at all of the Gondor units. And we are going to take a look at their stats and what they are effective against and what you don't want them to face, etc, etc. So we're just going to start with all the units that is possible to get before the barracks event. Um, take in consideration that, for example, the Fountain Guard and the Gondor Spearmen and Gondor Infantry is not as readily available as many of these other units. The Fountain Guard, for example, is a very rare unit. Uh, but yeah, I will go more into detail about it when we go into each unit. So we're going to start off with the general's bodyguard. This is your usual bodyguard. They have like 40 men, but they are an excellent unit. They have 32 defense, which is very, very high. And they have a decent attack as well, which is around 10. But they're definitely more of a holding unit than an aggressive unit. Uh, which is the case with a lot of the Gondorian units in general. What you don't want these guys to face is armor piercing units and that is for example the orc mullers. They have armor piercing. I'm going to show all of the enemy units after a while um, portraying what kind of units you want to make a look out for. Now this is your 
essentially your trash. Even though they're not very much trash, they work very well. They can have bad morale if you don't have a proper general. But if you have a general, they will actually hold quite well. And they are the Territorial Guardsmen. They have 12 defense, which is not too bad. Their attack is very poor though. So, as I said, they're more, more of a holding unit. And they're, they don't have a lot of armor, so that's no, not a big deal with armor piercing. However, they will still take some hits, so just avoid armor piercing after all. The Golden Militia is your trash uh, sword unit. They have 6 attack, pretty poor. 10 defense though, that's quite nice. And they have some armor as well. But they have some shields as well, so don't like don't make them be shot in the back. They will lose out a lot of their defense. Now the Lambda Clansmen, they come from the fiefdom barracks, and you can also recruit them in. I believe it's Kalembo. They are an armor piercing uh, axe unit, which is a very good uh, flanking unit in my opinion. Uh, they have a, a nice charge, uh, or a decent charge, it's not wonderful, but they are effective against armor and they can hide anywhere, so they are quite can be quite efficient in some terms. And they have a little bit of armor, but most of it comes from their defense skill, so they don't hold up too well against arrows. But definitely send these guys in against some elites from Mordor. Uh, especially like the Temple Wards, the Nazgul units, they're pretty good at dealing with those. Or in general just Trolls, that's uh, some good targets for these guys. And False Pikemen uh, comes as well from the Fiefdom Barracks, or you can recruit them in West Gondor. And they are Pikemen, so that means they're just very very good. You will want to upgrade their armor though, because they don't hold up very good against arrows. But like I have repeated very many times, these guys will just crush it because they're pikemen. That in itself is just so powerful. They can form a spear wall and they're skilled against mounts. Uh, our other spearman is also skilled against mounts. Uh, so usually I send a lot of territorial guardsmen and false pikemen towards Khand. But false pikemen can take a lot of hits from the Khandly Shredders. Uh, so they, I usually send the toy guardsmen uh, towards Khan instead of these guys. But uh, these guys are perfect at holding choke points. And you just know how well Pikeman performs in such situations. Now the Lebanon Marines, they are your only javelin unit. And they are certainly an okay one. They only got 7 missile attack. Which isn't wonderful, but it will work against the trash that Mordor has to offer. And they have a pretty nice defense as well, uh, where it's quite spread. A lot of it comes from the shield, so you definitely don't want these guys to be shot in the back, because they will take quite uh, a lot of losses. Yeah, and you, you just want to use this uh, Javis against the Temple Watch. They are a nice target for these guys. Now we come to the Gondorian Spearmen. They are one of your mid-game elites, or early game elites, I would say, because it's possible to recruit them every now and then. And they are, of course, a late game unit. They have 21 defense, which is very good. Uh, their attack is not very good, but they will make the enemy quite tired. And they're just very good at holding. A lot of their um, stats comes from the armor, so do look out for armor piercing. Don't send these guys in against uh, orc mullers. That's just going to be such a bad battle for these guys. The reason I'm mentioning the orc mullers so much is because they're a very common enemy for Gunnar. And you will face them a lot. Now, the counterpart to the spearmen is the Gunnar infantry. They have a bit more attack and they still have a lot of defense. Uh, and here as well, it, most of the defense comes from the armor. So do not send these guys in against the Orc Mothers. But these guys will essentially uh, kill off a lot of Mother units, uh, Orc Raiders and Orc Band and such. 
Orc Band is the perfect target for these guys. Uh, Orc Host will also work. But they're not very great. They are a decent infantry unit, but they're nothing special to be honest. Then we have the Lossenak Axemen. They are a very cool unit in my opinion. Uh, they get a change look when they're upgraded. They have 17 total defense, 11 armor. So these guys are very vulnerable to crossbows. Like, I just can't say it enough, they will get shredded by crossbows. Because uh, they have a lot of armor and they don't have shields. Uh, so they're just going to get completely devastated. Javelins as well, very devastating for these guys. However, these guys can be very efficient. You will have a general with these guys. Um, he is called... Um, I can't really... I don't really remember his name on top of my head. But he will start in Lossanak. And he will have these guys as his bodyguard. And you definitely want to use him as uh, much as you can. They have a 6 charge bonus. Quite nice. And that's basically it. Just they're... They perform very well, but send them against heavily armored units, because then they will shred units apart. They are very good. And you can get these guys from the fiefdom barracks early on. So if you get the fiefdom barracks, you will be able to recruit a lot of elites early on, and that's really going to favor you. Now let's take a look at the cavalry. We have the Gondor Cavalry Militia. This is a very bad cavalry unit. However, as I mentioned 100 times, Cavalry in this game, overpowered. They can kill up to 600 orcs. Uh, so you just want to get a lot of these guys. And they will of course capture routing troops. Uh, so I definitely recommend you to get these guys. They, Especially against Enelwath, they will perform very well. But also in Mordor. Against Khan, it's not very much worth it. They will just get shredded. No point in bringing them there. But against Mordor and Enelwath, definitely. Now here's the Pinoth Gelling Cavalry, they will also come from the Fiefdom Barracks and that's yeah, that's it where you can recruit them. Uh, they have 15 defense, 7 attack, 10 charge bonus, they are actually a very good cavalry unit. They're not up with the real elites like Knights of the Silver Swan, but they still perform pretty well. Um, and they're, I would say they're as good as the Gondor Cavalry. They have have very nice charges indeed. If you just cycle charge with these guys, you can rack up a lot of kills. And if you use this unit against Endowath and Mordor, you can bring down like 1,000 orcs. No, no deal. Uh, right, they will get shredded up. But uh, they will definitely bring down lots of orcs with them. So I definitely recommend bringing them. Now this is the Fountain Guard. They are actually a late game unit. But you can recruit them out of Minas Tirith. Um, but you will not get a lot of them. Like two, You will get like two units before the barracks went. But those two units will they will remain for the rest of the game. They have 22 total defense. 7 attack. And this is a pike unit. That should just say something to you guys. Now they are quite vulnerable to orc mothers. But, uh, because of their armor stats. But even with all of this armor... They perform so well uh, against orc mothers. You just don't want the, you just want these guys to stand in a straight line and guard, and they will get thousands of kills uh, throughout your campaign. I I believe in my Gondor Let's Play, I had all my Fountain Guard units remaining at the end of the, the uh, campaign because they just they don't go down if you don't do anything stupid. Um, they will hold I guess any unit and against Khan these guys are so perfect because of their armor stat and because they are very efficient against cavalry uh, this I would say is one of your best units as a Gondor one of your m most efficient units they cost a lot but they're definitely worth it now we'll take a look at the archers archer militia, uh, militia. Uh, they are horrible to be honest but against orcs, they will do quite nicely. But you do have other alternatives in in forms of archers, so uh, you will not use them too much. But they, they will work pretty well, but the missile attack is just pretty poor, to be honest. This is very bad. Uh, 
But they, they will get some kills. Uh, at least if you bring a lot of them, they will be very efficient. Like six uh, units of these guys will rack up kills. Just because there's so many. Uh, yeah. Now we come to the Black Root Whale Archers. Uh, these guys uh, are pretty nice uh, melee or missile unit. They can be used in melee as well. And a lot of their defense comes from the armor. Uh, so they will they will not get brought down so easily from uh, missiles, which is nice. But their missile attack isn't that great, to be honest. They have a nice charge bonus, considering they're archers. They have two-hander swords. But usually I don't really like this unit. Um, and I've played a lot with Gondor. And I... I just don't like these guys very much uh, because I think the Ethelian Rangers is way better. So we're going to take a look at these guys now, which I think is one of the best units for Gondor. Uh, I would definitely say this is the most efficient unit for Gondor. Uh, like they have a lot of defense and their missile attack isn't that good, but they're, they're still performing very well um, by some weird reason. And they are the best human arch unit, except, I believe, in the entire game. Uh, perhaps beaten by the Temple Marksman and the Dundain Steel Bowman in this version because they got armor piercing. But these guys are so powerful when used together. You start with like three units uh, in Henneth Arnon or two, I don't quite remember. But Farmer got it out as his bodyguard and they will perform very, very well. Especially in bridge battles and just against Mordor's trash, their missile attack will perform very well. So they are definitely a nice unit. And I usually bring these guys even in the late game, even though they are an early game unit. And I would say bring as many of these guys as you can because they are a very powerful unit. Alright, then we take a look at the late game units. I'm going to start with the Gods of Osgiliath. These guys are a very nice uh, halberd unit, which I think have, yeah, they have actually been made into pikes now. And that's going to be way better than before, because they were previously halberds, but they will now be pikes, which means they will just be a lot better unit. They will have 8 attack, uh, which is very nice, and they have four, uh, 23 total defense. They are very good against... Uh, cavalry and they're also effective against armor so these guys are actually much better now than before and they can probably kill a lot of uh, armored units in the late game uh, throwing these guys against um, rune and arunheim is not a very bad idea and of course against the varics of khan they will hold up very well to the arrows of um, the cavalry because of their high armor stat and they will slaughter the cavalry, so definitely a very strong unit now, much better than before. The next unit is the Wardens of the White Tower. These guys are monsters. They're one of the, I believe, top 10 infantry units in the game, uh, which is not dwarves or elves. Uh, they have 29 total defense, very good. Most of it comes from the armor, um, and they have 11 attack. So as most other units, just make sure you don't send these guys in against armor piercing units. But they will hold up very well and for a long time, very powerful units. Citadel Guard, they are your mainline elite unit. You can recruit them in almost everywhere. They will have 9 attack, uh, 4 charge, 29 defense, 15 armor. So most of their defense was again armor. And a little bit from the shield. But they have pretty decent attack uh, for being a spearman unit. And they are very good uh, unit against mounts. So um, use them against those guys. Now the Minas Ethel Guardians. Probably the best looking unit for Gondor. At least in my opinion. They are so cool. Uh, you need to take Minas Morgul to be able to recruit these guys. And I believe you need to have like... 35 culture or something around that. I do get a lot of these guys in my Gondoran let's play and they're very fun to use. 
They are essentially an upgraded version of the Citadel Guard, stat-wise. They have 31 defense instead of 29, and 11 attack instead of 9 attack. So these guys are actually quite equal to the Wardens of the White Tower, when you look at their stats. Uh, which is quite cool. So they are very good units. Probably your best Spearman unit, uh, or definitely your best Spearman unit. Alright, let's take a look at the late game arches. Here you have the Gondor arches. Uh, I usually just bring these guys to fill up my armies, they're not really that great. Uh, Ethereum ranges is way better, to be completely honest with you. Uh, they have a lot of armor though, which is very nice, so they can take a lot of arrows in an archer fight. Um, which is useful, but again, the miss attack is just terrible. I don't like them at all, to be honest. And now we have the Osgilet Veterans, which is a quite flexible unit, which you can use both in melee and as an archer. And they also uh, have stakes, which is nice. Uh, but their miss attack, again, only 6. That's uh, even worse than the Ethelian Rangers. And these guys are supposed to be a late game unit. To be honest, I want these guys to be removed and kind of replaced by I mean, as Ethel Guardian Archer unit. I, I just don't really like these guys, even though they are quite like their meeting is quite cool. I just don't really like them as a unit. I prefer the Ethelian Rangers to these guys, completely honest. So these two units uh, of Archers aren't anything very special. Ethereum Rangers will just, they will do the job very nicely. Now we have the Gondor Cavalry. They are very equal to the Pinathgelen Cavalry. They're not amazing, but they will still perform pretty well. A lot of armor though, so don't send them in against armor piercing uh, units, especially not other cavalry, uh, which is armor piercing. <laughs> that will crush these guys. Now the Tharbad Royal Guard is a special unit because it, they only come from the rebuilt bridge of Tharbad. So at the point when you have taken out Enelwife, these guys uh, you can recruit from there. They are a solid um, pikeman unit with a lot of armor. But if you meet Enelwife units which send some Javis into these guys, they will evaporate. So as most units they have very high. Um, armor values. And now these four um, the Amroth units you can actually recruit uh, yourself which is quite cool uh, out of Thanos in a specific building and it's very cool because you get the two most elite units for the Swan Knights uh, I mean the Amroth which is the Knights of the Silver Swan and the Talon Knights uh, they are quite powerful. Talon Knights are essentially a very equal unit to the Wardens of the White Tower not much separating them. These guys have a little bit more defense and a little bit more attack. But they are very powerful. Just get as many as you can. You also get the Seaward Spearman, which is a very good um, Spearman unit. Uh, a little bit worse than the Citadel Guard, but you can. They're still very good. Just send them down uh, to Count, they will perform very well. The Seaward Lancers and yeah, they are <laughs> they are very good uh, cavalry units. They are better than at least these guys and probably better than the Pinoth Gelin as well. And they can rack up thousands of kills if you use them properly. They are a very strong unit. Uh, definitely worthwhile recruiting. And now the Knights of the Silver Swan, which is just amazing. One of the best cavalry units in the game. Very cool that you can get these guys as Gondor. 14 charge bonus. They are devastating in their charges. Uh, even against pikemen, these guys will yield some damage. They're just very, very powerful. You will not get them after a while, but they are just... Yeah, they're so excellent. And I definitely recommend to get as many of these guys as possible. If Dol Amroth uh, rebels against you, you can recruit these guys out of Dol Amroth as well. <laughs> which happened in our let's play and in the end we had a very large army with just swan knights which is quite cool and be sure to check out that campaign it was very successful now i think that's all 
or we should actually take a look at some of the units um, from uh, the enemies we are approaching so I will see you right there alright and lastly let's take a look at the enemy units which you will probably struggle a little bit with or at least they can pose a threat to you now let's start with Mordor these guys you will see a lot and they're not really a great unit but they are armor piercing so you don't want to send Gondor infantry or Gondor spearmen against these guys because they will shred uh, uh, those kind of units uh, just bring these guys down with arrows they don't have a very good defense and now the Temple Watch and the Temple Marksmen are units which you will uh, meet uh, a lot because they are the bodyguards for the Nazgul and they have very good stats, 28 defense, 16 attack, 11 melee attack, 7 miss attack, 22 defense but most of their defense comes from the armor just bring them down with your Ethereum Rangers, Leben Marines and Lambdan Clansmen that's a way good to deal with these guys and we also have the Olokai, which will come from some Doomstack armies. Uh, you want to deal with them the same way as with the Temple Marksmen and Temple Watch, with uh, armor piercing units and missiles. Uh, the Lambda Classman is also a great unit to bring these guys down, or you can use Forlong uh, with his Rosanak Axeman. Now I remember the name. Alright, and we also have Enedwath. Uh, these two are Javelin. Uh, throwers and they have seven and eight missile attack. They can be, they are actually dangerous to almost all your units except for your archers because they're not within range. Uh, but if you bring these guys down with arrows, it will be quite easily. At least these guys die very easily to arrows. These guys have a little bit more defense, but most of it comes from shield and defense skill. So if you shoot them in the back, they're going to be shredded. Now, uh, for Khan, they have the Nomad Axemen, uh, axe wielding unit. They are quite effective against armor. So, make sure you don't throw in your very heavily armored units against these guys. The most thing applies for all of these guys. They are armor piercing, or they are just very good units. And there, then there's the Nomad Horsemen, uh, which is the exception. They are just a very good cavalry unit, which can't feel a lot of and they can pose a threat to you uh, I definitely just try just try to use your territorial guardsmen or Anfalus pikemen to deal with these guys uh, mostly the territorial guardsmen because Anfalus pikemen is not a very good matchup for Khand sometimes territorial guardsmen is pretty nice because you can feel a lot of them and they will be effective against these guys now I think that's all the units. You will of course have some units from Harad and Isengard and Rune and Aradunaim. But just make sure you look out for armor piercing units. Uh, that's mostly it. And you will be able to deal with them if you just use your Ethereum ranges. Uh, yeah. So that's actually it for this faction guide. So I did hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I've never made this uh, faction guide before, so I don't really know how to approach it. So please give me some feedback on what I did good and what I did bad, because uh, I am going to make more of these faction guides with other factions, and then I will need some feedback, definitely. So please just leave some feedback. But I think it worked out okay. At least I've got to say what I want to say about this faction. Because it's certainly a wonderful faction. You can play this faction for a long time without it becoming boring. And you see what an wife can pose to Gondor. But uh, that's it. Uh, subscribe, support me via Patreon if you like. And I will see you for the remnants of the Angmar episode.